All right. Okay. okay. Let's make a start. This is the second webinar of Teaching and Emotions. Um, and from the first webinar, I learned a lot and I made some adjustments and changes. Uh, and hopefully this one will be of uh, greater benefit and, and uh, more comprehensive. And you should be able to, I hope, follow what, what we're doing. I'm hoping also that um, there's a lot of interaction between you guys and maybe between you and me using the chat and at one time some breakout rooms. So I hope all of that goes okay. And please throw me comments in chats or questions in the chat line and I'll make sure I can, uh, I keep an eye out for that. Okay, the focus of this webinar, exploring emotional engagement with learners through materials and activities and two skill areas, listening and speaking. Um, and that's, while uh, I haven't really indicated uh, technical detail with the activities in terms of um, age group or uh, level of English, um, I focused entirely on emotional engagement. That, that's my focus. Um, okay. Um, first of all, before we go into the activities, there are a few important features that I just want to share with you because uh, I think they form a, a solid background behind what I'm, what I'm sharing with you. Um, one is lesson, lesson rhythm. And this is mainly to do with concentration span. Um, the problem with concentration span is that it's usually a lot shorter than we believe. Um, a colleague of mine told me how she had a concentration span of just a few seconds, but she was able to deal with that because she kept making little changes to the, the activity of the task that she was engaged in. And this as I've been learning through my years as a teacher and as a learner, this is what people do with the concentration span. They don't try to force themselves to focus on one particular thing for a long time. They will stop and change, change the focus, change the perspective, change a detail and let the concentration span start anew. Um, with concentration span comes daydreaming. Daydreaming is something that teachers tend to frown on. And yet, this, this it's a very important moment during learning, a time when the brain can just be put to rest. And at that, at that period of rest, the brain is incredibly focused and working at its optimum. So I'm going to be doing that a little bit in the activities, giving you a few moments just to linger and just to absorb um, what it is that we're fo focusing on um, because it helps with the process. Um, okay, the other feature is uh, something which I've had to uh, deal with, with teaching language, working with linguists, and there's always this tussle between starting with the basics and building up to the bigger picture in an activity or a task, or starting with the bigger picture and working down into the details. And what I've learned is that it's extremely um, useful to have activities which either combine both or have one activity uh, that may be bottom up followed by an activity which is top down. It's important that uh, learners are able to um, operate in, and, and work on activities which enable them or help them to work in both directions. Um, and that, that's, I'm hoping that my activities will demonstrate and show um, both of these ways of working. Um, 
The other one is this, um, handing over the reins of the activity to the learners as soon as possible. Um, I put down there, practice what I preach, um, because I can, if somebody doesn't stop me, run away with myself and forget that there's a whole group of people just waiting to grab hold of the activity and take it away from me. Um, but this, I think, is, is I'm, I, I'm in the activities, I hope to show how um, learners can take over an activity and make it their own. Okay, let's start. Any questions at all? Any chat comments or questions? No. Oh. Okay. I'll start with listening. And this one is working with squeezed together words. Now, originally I called this working with swallowed words and Olivia looked at me and said, tell me what do you mean by uh, swallowed words? Well, I use that because that was a comment one, uh, a student told me, he said, tell me, why do you swallow? Why do English people swallow words? And then I realized it's because English is a stress kind language where we squeeze words together, which we don't feel are important. And then we highlight the key words. So I'm going to hand this over to you right now. I've got four groups of utterances there. Play with them and see how you would speak them um, it, normal, at normal speed. And which words would you emphasize and which ones would you squeeze together? Um, this is a bit of awareness raising training for, for a teacher because I'm approaching listening from the point of view of the teacher being the playback machine rather than using apparatus that the teacher uses his or her own voice to provide the listening material. So I'm gonna leave you with about, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds, maximum a minute, have a look at this, play with them, um, either, and, 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 and see how you would say those utterances at normal speed and which words squeeze together. Have a go with them. Okay, um, something that can help is this. This is something that a, a pronunciation teacher taught me. And it's a kind of funnel device. You don't hold it to your head, you place it slightly in this part here in front of your mouth, this part in front of your ear, and all you have to do is whisper. And it amplifies your voice so you can hear every little nuance of your voice. And it's a great way to help the teacher and the learner listen to their own voice. Like, please wait here, I'll be with you soon. And you, all you need to do is whisper. And it's a great little trick that you can get learners to use. Um, there's one little phrase here, which I really love, which has, which stumped so many learners is the one, ask me later. As teachers, if we're going to do a listening with them where we're using our voice, we almost feel like we want to make every word clear. Ask me later. The problem with that is that it doesn't really replicate 
um, normal usage of language. And learners need at some point to handle the business, the, the stressful business of being able to handle that. Um, and how we can do this, how can we help them with this? I've got some ways we can hear some activities that we can do with this material. Um, write what you hear. And the idea here is that the students listen, the teacher speaks at normal speed, and the student tries to write what, actually writes what they actually hear. And the students, the learners, can ask the teacher to repeat as many times as the teacher wants. And it doesn't matter. Learners can keep on asking 10, 15 times to repeat, but the learner has to ask the teacher, please repeat. Now in conventional setup, um, learners might feel that if they ask the teacher to repeat, it might make the learner feel that they're not doing well, their listening is poor, something has gone wrong. Um, it's a signal of failure. Whereas in this way of doing it, it's actually a sign of positive learning that the learner is asking the teacher to repeat. The teacher repeats at the same normal speed, and that can happen many, many times. Um, and the idea is to help the learners train their ears to get used to something, to, to the speed, to the rhythm of the language. Um, and what you can do after that, um, actually then uh, have the utterances written up on, the, write the utterances on the board and then play with them, uh, practice them so that the learners then can see it and then practice and then they can practice with each other. And that's where learners experiment. I call that auto listening, where students can work in pairs. One is at, like the teacher and the other one, uh, the, the learner. And they're just practicing with each other, uh, playing with the rhythm. And the teacher wonders. Of course, that is, well, that's really ideally for face to face. Um, Marking the emphasized words um, where the learners can actually see the utterance on the piece of paper, they listen and then highlight which word in the utterance or the which words the teacher has emphasizes. Um, and then learners can see at a glance which, which words and then squeeze together. Construct and practice the speech act for each utterance. Now th this one here, that, that's where these can then be expanded into, the, into a, uh, a dialogue um, for each context. Um, yeah. And I think this kind of exercise, this kind of activity is very useful to help learners feel comfortable with the normal speed, the normal rhythm of the language. Okay, that's that one. I'm keeping a check on the time. Um, keywords and voice color. In the first uh, um, webinar, I introduced you to the way we cut up a text into tone units with pauses and keywords. And I haven't, I've done it here under the green is what I've done with the, the second text. Um, that's how I've cut it up into tone units. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 11 tone units there. Each tone unit, there's only one emphasized word. This practice is very important for listening. And I think it's also important for teachers to, to find this kind of rhythm um, with, with these texts. 
because what I found is that learners love to copy the, the music of the language that the teacher is using. The, the learners can see that how the teacher is working with the language and they love actually to, to copy it. That, that can, I've noticed, can help with their, make them feel good about themselves. Um, so have a go with this. When all the work's done, I can relax. Just practice that with, with, your, with yourself and see if you agree with my pauses. You might disagree. So have a look at that. See if you agree. And if you disagree, send me a chat. Is there anybody who disagrees with me? Ah. Oh. I just I just put a message in the Yes, I just know. <laughs> ah. You see, this is wonderful. I love this, right? Um sorry, can't turn my video on. Zoe, is it is are you okay now, Zoe? Okay. Um Liz. Hello, Liz. I don't think there should be a pause between relax and with a cup of coffee. Okay, I'm going to put you on the spot, Liz. Okay. <laughs> Try it. How, 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 what feels natural for you? When all the work's done, I can relax with a cup of coffee. And sorry, when all the work's done, I can relax with a cup of coffee and a good book. So I would, I would pause between coffee and a good book, but I guess I would say I can relax with a cup of coffee altogether. Okay, because the first time you said it, you did put an emphasis on relax, and then you changed it. Because I, 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 yeah, because I think because I, I saw the, the pause there, I might have been reacting to what was, was... Sure, sure, sure. And that's what's beautiful about this. Um, and then learners can actually shift around their pauses as to what suits them or suits each learner. Um, and I think that's great. The most important thing is that there needs to be pauses. And between each pause, one word is emphasized. Okay, thanks, Liz. Uh, Sarah, uh, I think I'd roll coffee and and together. Yeah, I'd say with coffee and a good book. Though it's quite a long build up to it, so you do want a pause somewhere. But I think yeah. with coffee and a good book, all comes out as one. Well. Coffee and a good book. Okay. Mm -hmm. So which word would you emphasize? Coffee. Oh, right. but I'd, mm, oh. With coffee and a good... Mm, I can relax mm. with coffee and a good book. Okay. There's a stress on book. Can relax. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, this kind of exercise is, I think, is very important for t if you're going to do some listening to to fix those pauses for yourself and then to, to ensure that when you go through the performance with the students that you're consistent and consistency is important there um okie dokie uh let me switch in anyone else no okay let's what I've got now, now comes the interesting bit of the webinar, breakout rooms. Um, I've got here, Olivia, I hand over to your expertise now. Um, I don't know, how, I, how many people do we have? Okay, I think we have 10 people. 10, so let's, can we, can people please go into the, uh, three I'll, groups? Okay, I'll put people into three groups. Is that okay, Sammy? Okay, and uh, one of you is A, one of you is B, one of you is C. The question is, how do, how do we decide who is who? Okay. 
it's going to do it automatically. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, I like right. it. Um, and then I think you might need to post the uh, text in the chat so we can see it. Okay. So I'll post all three texts in the chat. Okay, cool. In one thing. Okay. Should I, should I do breakout rooms now? Are you ready? Yes, yes, please do that. And I'll copy these into the chat. Okay. So, you might be in a breakout room. Is that okay, Sammy? <laughs> I might be yeah. okay, that's fine. Can everybody see the, 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 the text in the chat? Mm -hmm. What do we do once we're in the breakout room? Mm. Oh, where's Sammy gone? <laughs> <laughs> He's gone to a breakout room, I think. Um, I'll ask him, yeah, hopefully yeah. he'll uh, see that. that <laughs> I'm going to close all rooms and then he can explain. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to multitask and it's really not a good idea <laughs> at 6.30 on a whatever day it is. Yeah. Uh, it's only Tuesday. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Everyone comes. I brought everyone I'm, back, I'm back in the because we need to know uh, we need to know what to do in the breakout rooms. I'm sorry. No, the idea is to carve up your text into tone units and agree with each other. Okay. That's all. Just divide it up into pauses and between each pause, one stressed word. I'm sending the screenshot of the questions now in the chat. I think Thanks, that's the ABC. That's you might it, want to A, check. B and C, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, excellent. Are we ready to go into the rooms now? <laughs> Great. Um, Okay, ten. Da, da, da. I'm gonna just okay.
Was that enough time? <laughs> um, we had an honest chat, me okay. and Sami, but we couldn't see the text and it was just the two of us. We didn't like, uh, okay, just the yeah. two of us in the, in the subgroup. There was a, um, a, something in the chat that you could download, but anyway, hope you had a nice chat. <laughs> Hopefully you can explain. All right. I'm not very much familiar with Zoom and okay. uh, I'm getting... using it from my phone. Uh, so... okay. Right. Yes. <laughs> cool. Is everyone back? I think so. Um, did that work? Uh, because I was in in a, a room with Ido. Is that right? Uh, um, and I had to copy the text and we couldn't see it. So were other people able to see their text? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Yes. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, and do, were you able to find agreement on where to put pauses? Mm -hmm. Generally, yes. Generally, okay, all right. Um, and as I was explaining that part of this business of dealing with listening, especially if the teacher is going to be the active playback person is to work out for yourself where to put the pauses and be consistent with them. And then that can lead on to learners feeling very um, enthusiastic about doing something similar with the text, taking that on and listening to their own voices, um, putting in the pauses and, and the stressed words and getting a sense of the, of, of the rhythm. What that leads to is voice color uh, letting learners become comfortable and enjoy the fun of finding their own voice color in this strange language. Um, what I've got here I, on, on the other pages, I've added other texts, which I'm not going to look at now, but it's there available on the document if you want, if you uh, would be interested in taking these up, working with them, playing with them, um, they might be useful. And what we can do with this material, um, exploring the context, and I've added there the speaker's feeling. Identifying the keywords where the learners actually have the text written on the piece of paper, and they identify the keywords as, as in the previous activity, correcting mistakes where um, what, they, what the learners hear from you as the teacher is there are some differences with the text, the text that they have on the piece of paper and they interrupt you saying, no teacher, that's wrong. And um, they either correct their own text if their text is the original or they correct you if they have the original text in front of them and you as a teacher, the text you're speaking has mistakes. Completing the story, um, that's something else that, 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 that I think can be interesting for the learners to, 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 to do. Have a conversation with the speaker. Um, Yes, and the speaker could be the teacher or could be uh, a peer learner. And playing with voice color, as, as I've been mentioning before. So those are different things that you can do with that material. Perhaps you can, perhaps you have ideas of other things that you could do or you'd like to do with 
those texts. Maybe you could shoot that in the, in the chat, something else which has come to mind that you think we could do with that kind of listing material. Maybe. Okay. Um, in the ideas, I'm looking for chat. Oh, chat, where's this? Uh, ah, rewriting own words using synonyms. Yes, that's very interesting. It, um, okay, all right, okay, okay. So it's a kind of um, summary in their own words, mm -hmm. Sarah. Okay, thank you for that. Yes, um, that's quite demanding. Yeah, I'd do that with a higher, higher level yeah. student that needed yeah. pushing a bit. Yeah, um, another thing you could do is that just lump the, the highlighted words together and uh, put them spaced out and then in their own words, how would they, and that's like a writing exercise in fact, how would they um, put all that information together in, 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 the, in the text that flows, yeah? Mm, I like that all idea. Right. Okay, great. I've got to keep an eye open for this chat line, yes. Right, um, shifting stress. Now this has to be, I think this must be so familiar. So I'm gonna shoot this over to you. Here's the sentence. I asked you to buy me a bunch of red roses. Which words would you stress for these five following meanings? Have a go with those. Have a read those, or uh, not meanings, those interpretations of the sentence. How would you shift the stress? So I'm handing that over to you. Um, there might be a possibility of an extra uh, sentence one could put in there, an extra interpretation. Just shoot me a chat. Is this, is this an activity that you're familiar with? And you, um, UPS, just, just shoot me a, a, a chat because I think this is, this can be a, a lot of fun. Um, and also very useful because this is very much in the English language where you, um, you have, ah, either I'm not familiar with, okay. Okay, um, you see, it, it, it's very important for, for someone like me to recognize that what I think is very, is very familiar amongst people that might, might indeed might not be. Um, okay, I'm just gonna do a little check here, comprehension check. I'm going to say the sentence with one particular interpretation, please just shout out at the top of your voice, which interpretation and am I uh, referring to? Uh, I asked you to buy me a bunch of red roses. I asked you to buy me a bunch of red roses. I didn't want you to steal the roses. <laughs> okay, all right, yes. Um, so it, it's, thank you. Who, who was that, was that? Manoli. Manoli, thank you, Manoli. Um, yes, and this is a kind of game you can you, you, that, that that learners can have with each other. Um, and 
again, it, it just highlights and, and helps to build awareness, uh, not only of the color, the, the voice color in terms of, of, of the spoken, um, the spoken language, but also it, 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 it helps the learners feel more in control and more um, and stronger with handling um, list English spoken at normal speed. Okie dokie. Um, working with pictures. Now in this one, uh, I think pictures, are, I, I, as, as uh, several people reminded me in the last webinar, uh, pictures are extremely useful and can really help to engage learners emotionally with the language. So I'm going to show you these four pictures and then I'm going to, you, I'll ask you to listen to me say, um, a give a description and then just jot down on a piece of paper which picture or which pictures uh, that description refers to. Or you might find the description refers to none of the pictures. I'm going to leave you for about 30 seconds just enjoying and have some fun just looking at those four pictures. These moments of silence in a lesson, I think are so important. Um, and help the learner just take a breath, it helps the teachers take a breath as well. Um, and just to enjoy whatever is being presented to the learner. Um, and let your imagination run away with you. Okay, um, what I'll do is I'll say the number and then you can just jot down which picture, A, B, C or D, or which pictures, or maybe no pictures at all, that description refers to. Okay, are you ready? This is very strange. Remotely, it, 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 I can't see, I can see some faces here. Okay, right, there I can see some smiles. Okay, let's go. Number one, the children are sitting on a green carpet and paying attention to the teacher. So just jot down which picture you think that refers to. If you want me to repeat, just shout out. Are we putting this in the chat box or is this a... No, I just put it, uh, no, don't. Just put it on a piece of paper. That's fine, yes. No need to put it in the chat box. Okay, number two. This must be the final stage of the lesson. Okay, number three. The teacher is working on one particular learner. Number four, this is a kinesthetic lesson. Number five, the teacher is telling a story. Number six, the children are grouped around the teacher. Number seven, 
number seven. I think there's music playing in this lesson. Number eight, where is the teacher? Number nine, the children are completely engrossed in the activity. Number 10, what a beautifully painted seat. Remember, if you want me to repeat, just shout. D don't use the chat line, just shout to me. I'll hear you. Number 11, this room looks like an art studio. Uh, number 12, there are too many children in this lesson. Thirteen, what strange lighting. And number fourteen, the last one. I guess this must be a really noisy lesson. Okay, that's it. Let me ask you a question generally, and you can use the chat line for this. Were my descriptions the kind of descriptions you were expecting? Just shoot in the chat line, yes or no. If they were the kind of descriptions. No, no, no. Whoa. <laughs> oh dear. So, okay, three no's. Does that mean the rest, everybody else, yes? No, no. Liz, it's a good way. No, no, they were more interesting. Okay, all right, okay. Um, yes, often with a listening, especially if uh, the text or a picture and the listening is description, they're often rather technical questions, uh, descriptions. Now here, the, here they are, the 14 descriptions. Um, and who is it who said they're more interesting, interpretive? Yes. It, it, in a sense, this kind of description actually encourages learners to really listen. Now, from a linguistic standpoint, a description um, like number three, the teacher is working with one particular learner, that would be more linguistic because of the word one. So learners focus on that particular word. But it's boring. It's not exciting. It doesn't actually engage learners emotionally. Whereas something like this, where, like, where is the teacher? Um, well, that could be interpreted, well, the teacher's over there, or the teacher's down here, or there's no teacher. So there are different answers. No one answer is correct. So learners are not looking for a straight answer to a question or to a description. They're feeling their way into, well, how do I understand this and how am I looking at the pictures? So I would suggest 
to have uh, question uh, descriptions like this for a picture, it, it, I think it's more engaging. I like number 13, what strange lighting? Well, strange, yeah. Maybe none of the lighting is strange. Maybe unusual, but maybe not strange. Okay, dokey. Uh, I'm just going back to the chat. Any more in the chat? No. Okay. Um, well, that's that 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 that's how I'm suggesting how we can work. One way of working with pictures through listening. Um, ah, yes. Here, this is the next activity. Um, now, this one. I learned this from a, a professor in Edinburgh, and he was talking about stress, the stress of listening, where when learners listen to a text and they've not been um, given the question and they're just expected to write down and make notes, then learners used to tell me, I have to write down as many words as possible because I have no idea which words are important, which words are not important. So they feel that every word is in, could be important and they need to note or to memorize them. So this is a way of helping learners manage their stress uh, to help reduce it through a listening where they have no idea what might be key and what might not be key. So what I'd like you to do is listen. You're going to listen to me again now. Um, oh, something wrong went there. There was a 15th one. Are the children wearing some kind of uniform? Okay, ignore that. Sorry about that. Um, each learner writes who they think the speaker is. So I'm going to give you a sentence. I don't want you to copy the sentence. Just listen to it. And then after I finish, write down who you think the speaker is. That's all. Are you ready? Yes. First sentence. I get up at 6 a.m. every morning. Who do you think the speaker might be? I get up at 6 a.m. every morning. Second one. I only have time for a quick breakfast. Work begins at 7 a.m., so I must hurry. I arrive at the hospital at 10 to 7. Already many patients are in the waiting room. Each patient comes to my desk and tells me their problem. I listen and tell them to wait for a doctor. As receptionist, I must record the patient's details. I can see somebody nodding there. Okay. That's, that's it. Now, how soon were you able to pinpoint who the speaker is at the end of which sentence? This is just a few to just check with yourself.
you could give this listening as just one text. But the whole, whole idea here is to deliberately break it up into separate sentences. Give learners space, silence at the end of each sentence and write down what they think, what they feel, what they, what, what, what they imagine. Um, and that actually helps them. Having speculated who the speaker might be, that can help with their, with their listening for the next sentence, looking for little clues. And I think an, an, ex, an activity like this can be very, very helpful um, for dealing with stress in, in the listening. Helps them to relax. Ears and the brain do not work when they're stressed. We, I think that's quite, it's quite an obvious thing to say. Um, but sometimes when we do a listening, we're not, it, it, we, we sometimes might forget that. Um, it's, that can happen sometimes. Okay, so this is a kind of intro to dealing with the next activity, dealing with a long listening. Um, and this I think is quite a long listening. So what I'd like you, what I'd like you to do is, is, is read that for yourself. Um, and then what kind of question do you think you could ask learners at the end of this listening? So you give this listen in one go. And what kind of question? So pop that question into the chat, please. I think that could be interesting. Okay, I think this is a bit of a trick question I'm asking you. Ah, oh, we've got one, Please hang on a second. Okay, yes. How do you think the speaker felt at the end of the day? Yes, nice one. Because that can, um, that can help learners think, okay, it was through a whole day today started really badly and then we spent the whole afternoon and that's actually quite interesting because with the long listening um, the start and the end might be more memorable than the whole gunk in the middle um, yeah so that's a nice one what time of the year is this aha aha Nice one. Wet, wet, wet. It reminds me of when I was working in Malaysia where I discovered uh, the business of years being in two seasons, the dry and the wet season. So yes, um, for, for, for learners who come from a, a climate where there's monsoon, this, this, this would be a, although Although I did notice in Malaysia, yes, sometimes the monsoon storms would come and then stop for a bit. Okay. Um, the other kind of question 
I was thinking was um, like um, were you how can I put this um, something like did you enjoy listening to this story um, yes did you enjoy did you like listening to this story um, a question like that where it's more to do with with the business of learning rather than the content um, did you like this listening um, so that that's what I was thinking, but in the others, okay. Um, but I like the the, the 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 two questions that yes, Karen and Liz, you suggested. Yes, very nice. Um, what ways of 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 managing a long listing like this? Something that I do with learners um, is actually to get them to close their eyes while they're listening. This might seem uh, counterproductive, but they have their notebooks open and their pencil and the pen ready, but they close their eyes while they're listening. And then when the listening is finished, they open their eyes and write down anything at all that they remember from, from the listening. Um, and the idea is not to reproduce the text. The idea is simply to help them, uh, in a sense, enjoy the listening. And I think that, that that's something which is important to actually help the learners feel that they can enjoy listening to it, which actually helps the, the, uh, the, the listening and the ability to to catch and to hold onto uh, some information from the listener. Uh, another one is, um, this could be with a second or a third uh, re repetition, uh, putting in uh, a table like this with morning and afternoon. And maybe students work in threes uh, or three learners together in one group, one, uh, makes notes of anything to do with the weather, another one with what the speaker did, and another one with the speaker's feelings. Um, but that can be quite demanding. Another one, um, which is one I also like doing, is where you, you give the learners pairs of sentences with one word that's different, but with a similar uh, pronunciation element and then learners decide which sentence of each pair they actually hear. Um, but I treat that as a, as, a, as a game and that can be quite useful from a um, and in a sense this is a that's a kind of bottom-up uh, little activity. Another one uh, which is similar to the one we looked at in the previous activity where they have part of the, the listening text with mistakes and they, they correct them as they listen. And that's very conventional uh, one, but it's useful. It's got its place in a whole series of activities. Um, this one is a bit of a monster. I don't know. To, uh, please, please shoot me in the chat if this is something you're familiar with. And the whole idea is to replicate precisely a particular sentence. Now I've highlighted the last sentence of the text here. Uh, and what you do is, is uh, do dashes for each word on the board. Um, and the learners can listen to it as often as they want. And this is the other thing that you can repeat that that sentence again and again and again at normal speed and the, the learners can work together reproducing that sentence as precisely as they can. There are two ways of putting the dashes, either have the dashes of equal length or the length of the dashes 
are different according to the length of the word. Um, <clears throat> it might seem like uh, a really bit of a sort of a hardship activity, but when I've done it, um, learners actually get really, really involved. As long as you treat it as a, as, as a fun activity, <clears throat> <clears throat> not as something, not with any pressure. Um, because what happens is that it can really help them after they put up some of the keywords that they can hear and also where to place the keywords, getting those little words in between. And that can be very, very useful. Okay, I'm looking at the time and I'm moving on swiftly. Let me just do a summary of activities we've looked at in the listing. There were six all together. The first one squeezed together words. Second one, it's actually called chunking a text into tone unit. It's causing stress. The third one was shifting stress with that sentence about buying the red roses. Number four, working with pictures. Number five, who am I talking about? Number six, working, working with a long text. So there are six activities there with lots of different stages, which can help, which I believe can help learners become more emotionally engaged with materials uh, through listening. Or perhaps I should let, get, say that becoming more emotionally engaged with listening through different materials. Okay. Any, any, anything anybody wants to share with me? We might, ah, uh, well, I don't have time to do all the reading section. It would be, no, okay, yes. Actually, Olivia, it's not reading, it's, it's moving, it's actually speaking. Um, but, okay. Let's see if I can quickly zap through what I've suggested for speaking. Um, Thanks for pointing that out to me, Olivia. Um, what, what, okay, let me put it to, all, uh, to participants. Um, would you like me to work through, go through some activities that I've got for speaking, or would you prefer to ask me some questions? So just type in the chat, uh, uh, speaking or questions, which, what would you prefer? All right, okay, all right. I've got speaking, 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 speaking. All right, bon, alors, on continue. Find someone who, this is a very typical conventional activity that is used a lot uh, in language classes. Um, but you can use it not just to uh, help people get to know each other, but also to focus on and what, we're, what I'm focusing on in this webinar, which is emotional engagement. So I've just got three groups there, different, different ways of focusing on emotional engagement. Um, but each one does have a grammar element. Ha <laughs> ha. The first one with the use of the verb get. Um, I don't know what your feeling is about the verb get. I actually hate it. Um, because I find it very difficult to know how to teach and get. But there's a, an opportunity of how get is used in language. Um, and that's to do with uh, I'm focusing there on the emotions. And then loves, okay, loves is, is fair enough. And then the opposite, I was going to put hates, but I changed it to likes, quite likes, doesn't like, because that's a, a slightly more subtle use in English, and it's it. I think it, it's it's useful for learners to to get their heads around that. But that's a way of using find someone who um, to focus on uh, <clears throat> um, emotions. And then I put down here: let learners create their own find someone who. Ha! Huh, yes, I think that would be fascinating actually to to to, to ask learners to. Um, complete their own set, their own group of what 
they would like to find out from each other. Um, sequencing a narrative. Now this is again using pictures, but sketches this time. So let me ask you, what is the child saying to the adult? Over to you. So let's have a chat. Someone, someone throw in the chat. What is the child saying to the adult? <laughs> Anything? What is the child saying to the adult? Okay. Can we go to the Yes, yes, that's fine. That's lovely. Um, yeah. Okay. Is it? Let's go to the park. Okay. Is this sketch at the start, the middle, or the end of the narrative? So these are kind of questions. Um, to engage learners to talk about what they see. Why does the child want to go to the park? And give the child a name. Now, this was a, a story that was part of the Malaysian primary school curriculum, no, syllabus. Um, and I just, made the, I just made these sketches because they were not in the, uh, the course book, but I thought the sketches would be uh, of more benefit and, and more, um, uh, more, 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 more engaging for the learners. Okie dokie. Um, and let me say one thing. If I can produce sketches like this, so can all of you. We can all that. Doing these stick figures, it's great fun just to put some, to, to create some of these. And believe you me, um, provoke all kinds of wonderful reactions. So here we are. There are 14 of them in total. I haven't put any letters there. So just spend a few moments enjoying what's going on and try to work out a sequence. In your mind, can you come up with a, a little description to describe what is happening in each sketch? Okay. Usually, normally, one would put a, a letter, say, against each sketch. And then learners will call out letters according to a, a, a possible logical sequence. But that doesn't really help the speaking. So what I was thinking was that no, um, learners, they lay down the cards and they say what they think is what is happening in the, in the card, uh, in, in the sketch. And what should go after the what? Or you give uh, learners work in pairs. One learner has seven cards. The other learner has seven cards, sketches. And um, before the learner puts their card on the table, they, they describe what's happening in that card. Now, the first one is done. Let's go to the park. So that gets put on the table. And then the next learner describes one of their cards. The other learner listens and says, yes or no. For the for what for the for the next card in the sequence. Um, that's one way. But the whole idea is to, in a sense, gently encourage or push the learners to actually say what they think is what is happening in each sketch. Um, that's one way. But you give it to them as a, as a jumbled random collection of the sketches which they put together, or 
perhaps lay them out in a particular way and then ask learners to describe what is happening. So you start at the, start at the top left, let's go to the park. Um, what is the child doing and what is the adult doing? Um, and that can provoke quite a, 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 an interesting um, exchange of descriptions, exchange, uh, spoken exchange of descriptions. I'm looking at the time. Um, in the current, look, we can't go, oh, we can't, oh, we can't go to the park. We don't have our masks. Yes, all right, okay. Um, but in the UK, we've just opened up the pubs now, but I think, yes, they still have to wear masks. Um, okay, uh, Karen, look at my friend. Look, it's my friend. Oh, that's a nice one, I like it, yes. Look, it's my friend. Um, and then you're quite the artist, Sammy. I don't think that's in there, is it? Only in England. Oh, oh yes, sorry, 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 sorry. Yes, yes, only in England. Um, all right. Um, it can be quite demanding and you can help with a little bit of vocabulary if you want. Um, you can just choose just to focus on the, um, the games that the, that, that the child is doing. Uh, what the child is playing with in, in the park. Uh, or you can focus on the accident of the, of, of the child for landing badly after jumping. Um, or alternatively, you can, each lesson, you introduce learners to two or three sketches to talk about them. and. It, each lesson you build it up to the, to, the, to the whole story. But there are many things you can, you, you, you can do with this. Um, okay. Uh, right. I'm looking at the time. I want to move on. I, I, um, okay. If you want me to go back to the sketches and if you want to ask me a question about that, I'm very happy to go back to that. But let me move on briskly with the other ones. Extended speech acts. This is quite demanding. You have a box of feelings. Um, and learners ask each other, what bores you? What do you do when you're bored? Well, the first one, what bores you? Um, this requires that learners already have some vocabulary to be able to describe uh, what bores them. Um, and I've got a lot of, of, of feeling words there. Um, maybe you can start with just a few, maybe just four or five, or maybe even just three. Um, and that gets built up over a, a program of lessons. The follow-up question, which is the extended speech, and what do you do when you're bored? Well, I, what you can do is to provide a number of alternatives. Yes, this is written, and yes, learners read this, but the whole idea is that they speak it. Um, have any of you heard of Pelmanism? This is just something that's coming to my mind. Pelmanism, I'll write it. Helmanism. Has anybody heard of that? Okay. Let me try. Oh, someone has. I've heard the word before. Okay. The idea is that each of these sentences, like I have a nap, is on a piece of paper, face down. And you put all of these, or as many as you want, face down. 
And then you have these words here also, each one on a piece of paper face down. And the idea is that you lay them out, they're laid out on the table. Um, and one learner turns, turns around one, and let's say it, it's, it's bored. So what do you do when you're bored? Uh, one other learner turns over another sheet of, uh, a sheet, of, a sheet uh, not a sheet, a piece of paper, a strip of paper from this group here. It says, okay, let's say it says, I have a nap. So the first learner turns over board from that group of uh, strips of paper. And the other learner turns over another strip of paper from the other group, which is, I have a nap. And they decide, does it fit? What do you do when you're bored? I have a nap. If they think, yes, it fits, it matches together, fine. And they put the two together. Um, and the idea then is um, they, might disagree, they might not find a match. And if they don't find a match, then the two piece strips of paper are put face down again. Um, it's a lead-in to an extended speech act uh, that once learners are familiar with these uh, responses, then they can have that little uh, speech act practice. What was you, uh, Sammy's webinar, uh, what do you do when you're bored? I have an app. Okay, that's a little speech act, extended speech act. And then we go on to the next one. Uh, and then I put there also let learners come up with their own responses. Okay, I'm looking at the light time and we've just got two, two minutes to go. This last one is getting a dialogue going. So what I think I'll do is that it's on this document um, and I'll leave that for you. That's available for you uh, to, to, to look at uh, in, in, in your own time, because we're not gonna have time to go through this properly. Because um, it's on, you know, it, it, it's quite self-explanatory, this one, getting a dialogue going. It's on these pages all the way down to here. Okay. So that I'll leave it for you to have a, have a look at uh, in your own time on this document. But there's one last question I want to ask you. And this is the speaker's feelings. And I want to find out if you're happy, so to happy, not so happy or unhappy. So I want to ask you, how was this session? And you can choose from any of these. And I get a sense of, are you happy? so so happy not so happy or unhappy yes you'll get a copy of the document by email yes certainly yes so let me ask so this is over to, to you we've got one minute left just call out how you feel and i i and i i will not be offended Actually, I haven't left with many alternatives, have I? Um, but um, it's one way of, 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 of helping learners get a sense of, of, of how these, the, these responses work. Okie dokie. Um, so the, the speaking activities we've looked at, find someone who sequencing a narrative from sketches, extended speech acts, getting a dialogue going, which we didn't look at at all, but it's there in the document, and the speaker's feelings, um, how to interpret the speaker's feelings. Okay. That's it.
Uh, it's now 5.30. We've had 19 minutes. You must have, any, I think you've had enough of me by now. Are there any questions that you'd like to ask or any comments you'd like to make? Sarah is very happy. Thank you, Sarah. I'm very pleased that you're very happy. Well, happy, not very happy. Any questions? Not from me, Sammy, but thank you very much. My pleasure, Manoli. Take care, good luck. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop sharing now. Thanks a lot, that was really good. Thank you, I, I, I hope you, there's some things that are useful for you to take away with. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Yes, I try to keep it relaxed. 